So now, now we have discussed about uh, how uh, deadlocks uh, can be prevented. Uh, let's now discuss the more important topic, which uh, usually you know uh, people who really uh, want to get an idea of whether you know about operating systems or not would like to ask you is about deadlock avoidance. And uh, deadlock avoidance uh, is is something that would require the operating system know a little bit more about the processes. Usually, uh, what the operating system needs to know uh, to be able to uh, come up with a uh, efficient deadlock avoidance uh, system is uh, how many uh, total processes uh, exist in the system right now, um, how many maximum number of resources does uh, the process have the ability to take okay uh, how many you know maximum resources will the process require now it could be that in a process runs for 10 minutes and during at one point of time it takes five resources then it takes two resources then it takes 10 resources so what's the maximum number of resources it's going to take so we just consider that it will be uh, taking 10 resources at the maximum uh, stage um, and uh, we need to know uh, how many uh, total available resources do does our operating system uh, have okay um, so uh, there's something called a resource allocation uh, state which is defined as the number of available and allocated resources on the maximum uh, demand of the processes um, so uh, we uh, create something uh, called the um, uh, state uh, state uh, graph where we define each state where uh, each resource has a particular number or uh, each process has a particular number of resources allocated to it so uh, I, I, to give you an idea of what i'm talking about uh, say we have uh, we are working on this uh, computer which has um, say five uh, disk drives onto which we can read or write uh, so let's consider these as resources and we have uh, two uh, processes that are running and these processes uh, might need uh, access to disks to be able to write. Uh, two processes cannot access uh, the same disk at uh, a time. So these are non preemptible and uh, mutually exclusive resources. Um, so uh, let's say that uh, the number of resources we have is uh, five, that is uh, max. Okay. And uh, we say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, process P0 and process P1, they can, um, they need, process 0 needs at the most uh, four uh, resources and process 1 needs at most uh, two resources, okay. So it does not mean that process 0 always needs four disks, but during the time the process is executing process zero at this at one point of time in that process there is one maximum time where it simultaneously needs four disks and there is a one particular time during this entire operation where uh, process one needs two disks now uh, uh, so there's one thing that we can be sure of is that if the number of disks that p0 needs at maximum is uh, supposedly you know uh, if it is uh, two and if it is one now this is the maximum need now this system uh, does not need a deadlock avoidance system because even when uh, process zero has all the disks it needs allocated and when process one has all the disks it needs allocated even then we would be left with some disks because we have five disks we can easily allocate two to process zero one to process one so this system will never face a deadlock. There is no way we can have a deadlock in such an operating system. Such, so uh, the, the, the whole discussion about uh, this uh, deadlock system comes only when the sum of max here uh, in P0 and P1 comes out to be bigger than five. So process zero, let's say, can have access to four uh, disks at a time and process one can have access to three disks at a time. Uh, so we start the operating system at the stage where both, uh, you know, uh, or let me just use a different color ink. We start the operating system at the stage where process um, zero and process one both have access to no disks. And at this stage, what happens is say process zero needs one disk. So we go to this particular stage where you, let's just call it, you know, one comma zero. So 
one disk allocated to process zero and uh, zero disks allocated to process one. Now from this, uh, say there, there is the next step. It can happen that process one asks for three disks, okay? Uh, the next step is say one comma three. Um, or it could be that uh, there is another condition from here is that uh, process uh, zero asks for two more disks and we'll get to this three comma zero situation. Okay, and so as you can see that uh, we, we start with this graph. Um, what we will uh, notice here is that uh, from this state, uh, if uh, process uh, P0 requires two more disks, uh, process, uh, you know, uh, what I'm saying is that process P0 requires two more disks, uh, such an operation will lead us to a state which needs uh, 3, 3 which is not possible because we don't have six disks, we have only five. So this is a deadlock situation. So as soon as process P0 asks for two more disks, we end up, you know, in a deadlock, okay? Um, but it could also happen that after this uh, little situation here, uh, process uh, P1 ends its operation, you know? The next step could be that we go to one comma zero because uh, process P0 has ended, okay? Uh, in that case, uh, this uh, state is fine and after the state, if P0 needs uh, three more resources, we get to four comma zero. And then after that, both the processes end and we reach a conclusion here. So we'll see that, you know, uh, this uh, resource allocation uh, graph would uh, look somewhat like this. There would be this initial state to start from then there would be a lot of different states that we go to, then further states from there, right? Uh, there would be some states that uh, lead uh, to a deadlock. And there will be some states that finally lead to the system, uh, you know, ending in the proper way. So uh, there are different kinds of uh, ways this situation might resolve itself. So this every uh, node in this graph is called a state graph it depends it describes a particular state uh, where uh, a state is described as how many resources are allocated uh, to each uh, process okay um, so why are we discussing all of this is because uh, uh, how do we discuss if a state is safe or not is uh, let's say we have uh, this uh, uh, so this little example where uh, there are nine drives so uh, you know total drives are you know nine uh, sorry uh, my bad total drives are 12 right and right now nine of them have been allocated uh, we need to decide whether this state is safe or not uh, so uh, we, we we just discuss we uh, we just uh, you know try to think that from here, if the next step is uh, that uh, process uh, P0 takes all the, I mean, uh, we, what we assume is that uh, from this current state, what can happen is either we stop P1 and P2 and we tell P0 to take all the resources that you want and finish yourself. Then we tell P1, take all the resources that you want and finish yourself. And then we tell P2, take all the resources that you want and then finish yourself, okay? Uh, so we just think that if each process can individually finish itself, uh, then all three of them could be able to finish themselves in some order or the other. Okay, so we think that, you know, uh, P0 uh, takes access to the remaining five resources that it needs, uh, which would uh, turn us into this new state where 10 comma 2, 2. Um, okay. Now, can this happen? Uh, this cannot happen because the maximum number of resources we have is 12, okay? But what can happen is uh, we can first allow P1 to take all the resources that it needs. So we go to the state where 5, 4, 2. Now, uh, this is possible because this requires 11 resources and we have 12. 
and after this what will happen is the next state this process will end itself because you know process p1 we have allowed it to take the maximum resources it needs if once the process is able to get the maximum resources it needs it can finish doing whatever it was doing so the next step we have 5 uh, 0 and 2 from here we uh, can allow p0 to take the rest of its resources and we can get to 10 0 2 after which uh, p0 will exhaust itself the next step would be um, 0 0 2 from there we can allow uh, p2 to take all the resources that it wants so we have 0 0 9 and finally process uh, 2 can exit so uh, if we allow uh, p1 to execute first then p0 to execute and then p2 to execute we would be able to you know get out of the situation without encountering a deadlock now whenever there is a path via which uh, we can allow all the processes to finish in a sequential manner without encountering a deadlock that kind of a state is called a safe state because uh, we have at least one path which allows us to get out of the state without a deadlock. Um, but uh, what can happen is that there can be certain states uh, in which there is no way out of that state without encountering a deadlock. Now, uh, can you think of uh, a, a situation? I mean, let me just uh, erase all that stuff here, okay? Um, so, uh, can you think of a situation? Uh, can you think of a uh, state table where, you know, you just, uh, arbitrarily decide some current needs of p0 p1 and p2 and uh, can you give tell me a, an example of a state from where there is no way to exit i mean uh, p012 or 102 or 210 in any order i am unable to exit from that state can you just uh, give me an example of such a, such a state we're going to discuss how uh, unsafe states work in the next video